But I think the the reason why and and the how I was able to overcome all that is through personal development. I mean, all the all the personal development I was doing, like I just knew that you know it was good information. I knew that if I focused on you know what I wanted, and also like the people around me that were telling me all these things. Um, I was a part of a multi-level network marketing company. And so I got introduced to personal development. I got introduced to Think and Grow Rich, Bob Proctor, Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki. So I got introduced to all these guys super early. And uh, you know, the mindset started getting developed and I started realizing that I could do a lot. Um, and so, yeah, I actually, I saw a Robert Kiyosaki ad on Facebook um, and it was a free event. I thought he was going to be there. It made it seem like he was going to be there. It was all, all of his coaches. Uh, and all they were talking about was wholesaling and real estate. And I was uh, a freshman in college and I was like, this is it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's easy. Cause you don't, you don't need any money for it. But now, now why did you get involved in this? Because two things, one is your parents don't tend to be the most supportive people of your entrepreneurial escapades. Number one. And number two, your friends certainly are, aren't, you guys are got other, other priorities. Why, how were you able to get involved in this business with everything with your surroundings what did you do about your surroundings were they were, were friends and family holding you back what did you do about it what did you go through yeah. there yeah though they definitely it was it was a lot of sacrifice i get you know asked a lot like you know you're young how'd you do it but i i think i went through so much from all the noise the exterior noise i was you know my my family for sure my mom supported me and she always will but my father had that, you know, like, hey, you need to get a job, you need to go to school, you need to get good grades, you need, you know, like, you know, get a construction degree. And so um, when I got started in, you know, network marketing, I was like, you know, this is it, I'm going to be a millionaire, and I'm going to sell these products across the world. And it was just super, super challenging. Uh, but then in college, I actually joined a fraternity uh, as a freshman, and it was even worse. It was even more of a challenge to get through all that. I was that young kid and, you know, the millionaire, oh, the, the millionaire walked in the room, like, hey, guys, quiet down, the millionaire's in the room now. So I had to, I had to overcome all of that. But I think the the reason why and, and the how I was able to overcome all that is through personal development. I mean, all the, all the personal development I was doing, like, I just knew that, you know, it was good information. I knew that if I focused on, you know, what I wanted, and also like the people around me that were telling me all these things, they didn't have anything in their life, really. I mean, they had nothing for me to say, like, okay, I'm going to listen to you, you know? So I actually, I mean, I didn't I didn't take no for an answer, and I didn't take that to heart. Um, there was some challenges, but I went through it, and I still face some challenges today. So. so I actually, I relate to that a little bit with the college thing. So I was definitely not a millionaire in college, but I had, uh, I was selling knives, and I was, I was making, you know, 30, 40K a summer compared to my friends that were making, you know, two to three K a summer. So I had a little bit more change to play with, but I'm just curious, you know, at the, especially at that age, there's not, you don't really have good influences around you necessarily, or anyone that's in your circle of five, that's, that's going to push you forward. And I'm just curious, did you have that somewhere else? So or I got what? involved in the real estate networking clubs. As soon as I went to that Robert Kiyosaki event, I, I asked, you know, around the room, what do I do? Who do I need to meet? Where do I need to go? And I downloaded meetup.com. I went to every single real estate networking club in San Antonio. And I just started shaking hands and I started meeting people in there. And I was like, man, I mean, these people are way ahead of me. These people, you know, are doing huge deals and making really good money. And, you know, all my friends back over there who are telling me that I'm dumb, that I don't know, you know, what I'm doing, they, they had nothing. So I actually started surrounding myself around the club a lot more. I started volunteering in the events. I started, you know, hanging out. I would, you know, those real estate networking clubs, they start at like five and they end like at 10. So I was there like all day. I was, you know, just networking, shaking people's hands. And the thing is that early on, I knew through my personal development that I needed to find a way to provide value for these people to be my friend. And so I got really good at finding deals. I got really good at finding off market motivated seller leads through, you know, driving for dollars, cold calling, mailers. I was doing it all, blanketing neighborhoods. So these people like started liking me. So they, they would hang out with me. Um, but I was okay with it. I was okay with it because they were teaching me something that would pay me for the rest of my life. So um, so I actually, I mean, I started making friends in the real estate clubs and, and they were all older than me, but, um, you know, I was okay with that. Were you getting good grades as well at that point? Challenge, yeah. So I was actually studying construction management. So I was actually like 
passionate about it. I found my passion in architecture and, you know, construction early on when I was super young. Um, and so I actually like, liked that stuff. Um, but I definitely knew that, I mean, you know, in the construction program, they were talking a lot about being the best construction employee for whatever company, right. They weren't teaching you how to build your own construction company. So it got really boring for me. And, um, so I would just, you know, be friends with the people in class and they would help me, you know, study and they would help me, um, you know, work on those things. So did you, do, looking back on it now, do you think you were born an entrepreneur because it sounds it sounds to me like you're just kind of against the grain from the beginning of the, of the institution right so you know just thinking back and you're selling chocolate bars door or whatever you think that was there yeah actually so my father he was an extremely good salesman uh he didn't go to college he didn't have a family to you know help him you know guide him in the right direction and he had he actually started selling cars um, and so very early on, I remember going to the dealership and, you know, him sitting me in the corner of the, of the office and him just closing deals. And like subconsciously, I was just, you know, sitting there, he was taking care of me, but I was just like learning and listening. And I remember like watching him get up and not let people leave. I remember, you know, just get him getting aggressive. And also, um, you know, he was, he was the type of dad that would say like, all right, all those chocolates from school, I'm not going to sell them for you. You're going to sell them and, and I'm going to help you, but you're going to go out and sell them and go, go into, you know, the dealership and go ask all these people to buy chocolates. And so I was like nervous at first, but I started getting really good at it and I started, you know, being really good at it. And so in, in high school, I started selling, you know, phone cases. I started selling like, you know, snapback caps. And so I was just, I, I was just going and it's in the blood for sure for my father. So yeah, so this is cool because sometimes it takes a minute to ignite that. So a lot of people listening to this right now are probably like, "Man, you're way ahead of where I was when I when I was your age, right?" And, and I'm actually thinking that way too. I'm like, "You're you're just doing all kinds of cool stuff." But I think at a certain point in anyone's life, they can find that thing that ignites them. Is even in the sales field, I think the the closest parallel to entrepreneurship is sales. And for me, you know, I was, I was such a problem child all the way until I was 18, uh, getting in trouble with the law. I was just kind of, I was going down a terrible path, to be honest. I wasn't going anywhere good. And then when I learned sales and the, the, you know, I started to get recognized for my ability to sell. And then I developed that skill further. That's what ignited it for me. I was like the, the ones like flip the switch. And all of a sudden after that, I was on fire coupled with the, you know, the personal development stuff and, and everything. And then after that, it was just kind of like, all right, see you later. You know, and then I was, then I was down that path. And so for anyone that's listening, you may be 50 right now. And you're like, man, I, I didn't do that, that stuff, but you have, maybe you haven't found that thing that just, that just triggers you that, that snaps that light switch on. To go forward, it sounds like you might have done that at an early age. Yeah, yeah. I think the personal development. I was doing a lot of Zig Ziglar, um, and I mean that that talks a lot about sales. And I think the company that I was selling those those products for, I mean, required me to be really good at sales. I mean, I had a I had an overhead, and so I needed to make more money to you know cover that or overhead. So I started actually inviting a lot of people to home events. I would have like little events in my clubhouse and my apartment complexes. And I, I had to stand in front of the room and, you know, sell the product. And I, I just, I practiced it. I was horrible. My first few events, you know, I sat back up and, you know, my mind sat back down kind of thing. And, you know, I just, those few events sucked, but I, I got better at it and I focused and I studied and I just practiced. I, I think it's, it, I think very few people are born salespeople. I mean, I think some, you know who they are, but I think to a large degree, you can you can learn to sell. I mean, I'm not a, a born salesperson. I, I really I, I'm kind of uncomfortable, but I would say I've gotten somewhat proficient at it. And and I think anyone can learn how to sell. And I think it's important that you learn how to sell. You sell stuff all the time. If you're married, you're selling your spouse every single day, right? Every your kids, day. same thing. I mean, it's, selling is such an important skill. And like the uh, Garrett, the the, 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 inf the experience you had with Cutco, uh, my daughter lasted 14 days, a little shorter than you did. But the the training program that she learned at that was just was priceless. So I think sales is a super important skill to have. Well, anyone, Michael, that you see that's successful right now, they all have the ability to sell. In fact, some of the people that are the most successful, you'll just you if you get around them, you're like, 
man, that person could sell you anything. And it's just, it's almost like a byproduct of the fact of the other things that they have going on, but it's just, it's so dialed in that, you know, they, cause you, cause you, like you said, you're selling everything all the time. And so it, people have learned that. And I agree. It's, it's a skill that, that becomes learned once people get out of their comfort zone and no longer is it really one of those things that people look at and they're like, Oh, it's like a cheesy used car salesman or any of that stuff. I think selling now in today's society is more acceptable and it's more recognized. And you mentioned too, Adrian is getting out of comfort zone because your dad asked you to do something like sell chocolates. Like I asked my kids to sell popcorn for the boy Scouts, man, did they want to do that? Heck no, they don't want to do that. It's awful. Going to door to door and have someone tell you no, like that's awful. And then after about the 12th door, 15th door, they're like, ah, just said no. And that's a huge skill that most people, especially when they're not in sales roles or they're just so afraid of it. And so it's really great that your, that your dad kind of forced you to do that. Um, So so you got, you got the entrepreneurial bug early on, which is really, really cool. And uh, you got into real estate and, uh, and then you were, you pivoted to multifamily. Why did you do that? What was wrong with simply doing what you were doing before and why did you switch? So I, you know, I had a vision for my future of being financially free, traveling the world, you know, building wealth, having residual income, you know, and all through real estate, right? And so, you know, I thought single family, you know, I got really good at it. I got really good at finding deals and structuring and building rapport and selling and closing deals. But it was, you know, we would close the deal, we'd make the money, and I'd have to go and find out, find the next deal. Um, and so I had to get back, you know, from the start, I had to go talk to the VAs, get, you know, the sales guys going and then get a lead and then close it and then boom, make money. And then it's like, okay, again, you know, and so it was, it was very transactional. Um, and it was, I mean, I had to drive all over town to go to one lead, one appointment. I had to wait in traffic. I mean, one hour there, one hour back. I mean, San Antonio is a big city. And so I just, you know, I I got to a point where I was like, I mean, what, what's next for me? I was young. And, um, and so I actually, I started hearing about multifamily through my business partner, Mauricio. So he actually, um, he, I was his intern in a construction firm actually from college. I went to go do an internship for my hours and he actually was a project manager for the construction firm. And so we were working together and I was doing single family and he was like, Hey man, like, I also want to travel. I also want to, you know, you know, live life on my own terms. And so he told me like, show me this real estate thing. So me and him started doing a couple single family deals, but his engineer mindset was just like, this, this is not it. And I think he listened to one of your podcasts and he was like, wow, like this, like this is it. And so he attended one of your events and I was, you know, again, in constant communication with him. And I told him like, go do your multifamily thing. And I'm going to stick to my single family business. And not too long after that, he actually uh, came to me with a lead, a 24 unit in San Antonio that he had gone under contract and that he was going to wholesale it and make a tremendous amount of money. <laughs> and that's when I just, I was like, wait a minute, you know, what's, what am I doing wrong here? How many houses do I need to flip in order to make that kind of money? And it was a no brainer for me. I had probably a hundred active single family leads that I was working at the time. And I called one of my buddies and I was like, Hey, I'm selling my entire workspace uh, of leads on, on podio. I had a bunch of leads and you do you want it for 5,000 bucks? And he's like, dude, yeah, I'll take it. So I just completely sold all of my single family information. Like I just went all in, like when I say all in, all in from that day till now, I don't touch a single family house. 